Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, sponsored by the National Health Association. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and today I'm delighted to have as my guest, Tobay Atkins. Tobay is a uh, young vegan, really uh, doing a tremendous work. He's really committed to his path as a yoga instructor, and we'll talk a lot about that. He's got a uh, Tobay's Mindful Kitchen, so he's also got background, and he's working as a vegan chef with his mobile kitchen, providing food across uh, where he lives. And uh, it's just nice to be able to get the viewpoint of someone who started so young and has made such an impact. So welcome to Bay. I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association, the oldest organization in the world, championing the extraordinary benefits of a whole plant food diet and healthy lifestyle, as well as water-only fasting. We believe that health results from healthful living and focus on evidence-based science that promotes the health of you and your loved ones, as well as the health of all animals and the environment. We feature experts from a cross-section of disciplines within the plant nutrition, vegan, psychological, environmental, and animal compassion sectors. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, the NHA's Director of Health Education. Thank you for having me, Frank. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you know, a lot of times people are very interested into how people get started on this path. And your story is really unique because you started at the age of seven going through a major health crisis with your mom. So can you relay that story a little bit and talk about the influences that kind of brought you to where you are today? For sure. Yeah. Uh, When I was six years old, my mom was diagnosed with stage three non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. Um, I'm not sure how much you know about that specific type, but um, there's Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. With Hodgkin's, you have a 70% survival rate. With non-Hodgkin's, you have a 30% survival rate. On top of that, my mom was misdiagnosed for almost a year, and um, she was in really bad shape by the time she was diagnosed and had to go through very intensive chemotherapy. Um, So intense that it broke her down physically and emotionally, down to the point where she couldn't even walk on her own. She couldn't bend or straighten her knees. Um, She had to be in a wheelchair all the time whenever she was going anywhere. This was way before we knew anything about uh, veganism or yoga. Uh, This was basically, you know, this is our origin story, how it started. Well, today, Uh, was it just you and her on that dance right there? Was there any other family members involved? My uh, grandma and grandpa were there uh, also helping take care of me because I couldn't be at the hospital very much because I was very young. So I had a lot of uh, germs and couldn't be around her. Her immune system was very weak. It so, must have been uh, very frightening for a six-year-old boy, you know, dealing with all of that. Yeah, it was a very difficult time. Um, thankfully, I had lots of support and love from uh, many of my family members and friends always there taking care of me and making sure that it was uh, uh, an okay experience. Uh, eventually, my mom beat cancer, um, but even though she beat it, she still had all the side effects of the treatment. She still couldn't walk. She was still very sad, depressed. Um, and, you know, she didn't know how she was going to get healthy again. Her immune system was so uh, was so low. It was off the chart. Right. Um, now, it's, I guess it would be uh, important to know that during her cancer treatment, there was this lady who was reaching out to my mom. Uh, my mom didn't know this lady, but they had a mutual friend. And uh, her name is Carolyn Long. She, uh, her mom passed away from cancer and her sister was going through cancer at the time who later passed away. So Carolyn wanted to uh, just reach out to my mom to give her some support, tell her that she knows what she's, what she's going through and just wants to be there in case she needs anything. Uh, my mom was in such a dark place that she didn't even want family members to be there, let alone, uh, you know, respond to a friend who she doesn't even know. Uh, so she just ignored her messages. Um, and But she kept on messaging, kept on messaging, even... She might have had the wrong number because my mom just didn't say anything back. Um, By the time my mom beat cancer, she thought, you know, this lady was so nice to me, always reaching out. Uh, Maybe I should uh, I should meet her, um, just get to know her, see her for like tea or juice and just thank her. The day and time that my mom chose to meet this lady, um, you know, the lady said, uh, Carolyn said, "Uh, just come. I'll be getting off work at this gym. You can meet me here. So uh, we got a ride there because, you know, she still couldn't drive. She was still broken down. Uh, She walked into this room and saw Carolyn and about eight other people there with very thick manuals. turns out they're about to start a 200-hour vinyasa yoga teacher training. 
and Carolyn was a teacher. Uh, my mom was a bit confused and said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I came at the wrong time, wrong day. Um, and Carolyn said, you know, I've been trying to meet you and reach out to you for so long while you're going through cancer. This is the day and time you chose to meet me. I'm about to start a 200 hour vinyasa yoga teacher training. You're meant to be here. And my mom d didn't really want anything to do with it. She really knew how to spell yoga. Um, but um, I, with a little bit of resistance, she finally decided to stick around for the training. Um, and I was there as well. I was there not participating in the training, but uh, because she had no one to watch me, she you know, had me come with her, but she gave me like coloring books and things like that. But I was paying attention. Uh, I was seven years old at the time. And the teacher training lasted about two months, maybe two and a half months. And I was there and I got to watch uh, quite an incredible progression from how my mom was when she first entered the training to by the end, her being able to walk on her own again um, and being happier and healthier than even before she had cancer. Not like by doing yoga, she no longer had any problems uh, or any stresses or fears, but yoga gave her the tools to properly deal with any stress or anxiety. It was like weights were lifted off of her. Uh, I noticed that and I told her that I want to become a yoga teacher so I can help other people heal the way I saw yoga help heal her. Uh, she thought I was telling her what I wanted to do when I grew up, but really I wanted to start right away. Um, you know, seeing her going through cancer and all the other people in the hospital who probably didn't know about yoga either. Uh, I was inspired to share yoga to help people heal, stay healthy. Um, even if, uh, if they don't know, it, it's good for them maybe to get into it. So we started traveling the country, taking certain, uh, taking specialty yoga teacher trainings and getting certified. My mom was passionate about ki kids yoga, teaching yoga to kids, because if yoga has so many benefits for adults, it'd be even better if kids had it starting out in life, you know, giving them the tools to take with them throughout their life, throughout any hardships they may go through. I eventually got my 200 hour vinyasa yoga training as well. Um, I did that when I was 10 years old and that's when I got certified to teach, which is uh, when I started teaching my own yoga classes. My mom's teacher training was about two and a half months. That was how the 200 hours was broken up. But my 200 hour training was broken up into around 16 days. So it was very intense, lots of information. Wow, that's intense, 16 days, 200 yes, hours. Very intense. Uh, but I absorbed it all and I learned how to teach. And that's how I got into yoga. That's how my mom and I got into yoga. Which but all, all during this time that, you know, she got into that yoga setup and it was helping her mobility. It was helping her recover to some degree. At that point, you still weren't eating re relatively conventionally, right? You weren't really into the eating plan that, you know, the vegan approach, the plant approach yet. That's, that's true. We weren't, uh, that was the very beginning of our wellness journey, but after getting into yoga, we definitely became more health conscious. Of course, we didn't have as much information or resources as we, as we now have picked up, but we started to eat organic, um, thinking that that was, you know, we need to be healthy, let's eat all organic. And we always stayed away from uh, red meat and pork because my mom just never liked it growing up, but we were always having chicken and turkey, sometimes right. fish. We thought it was healthy. That's how we were conditioned to believe, and that's what we grew up um thinking so uh you know we were healthier than before we we're healthier than what's conventional but uh, still having things that we shouldn't be having you know chicken dairy eggs things like that um but we were definitely going somewhere uh especially being so deeply involved in uh, the yoga world because yoga and uh, veganism are so hand in hand, so tied together with such similar values. I always say that if you are in the yoga world, you're going to hear about veganism, whether you like it or not, Right. But whether or not you choose to, you know, follow that path, that's up to you, but you're definitely going to hear about it. In those early days, was your mother still involved in any chemotherapy or treatment when you were first uh, on your journey with yoga and all that? She had come through some of that. Was she still being treated medically? No, after, um, you know, it wasn't until she was, until she had her last chemotherapy and she was, you know, her uncle said, you're good or you still have all these effects. I don't know how you're going to get your immune system back up. I don't know how you're going to recover, but the cancer is, you know, taken care of. 
that she still had to take like you know weekly then monthly and eventually yearly uh checkup scans but everything right, of clear. course um so she was done with can with uh, cancer treatment and it was two weeks after she had her last chemotherapy that she got into the yoga teacher training i see and is she how is she now she's doing great uh thankfully you know so because, it's, been, it's uh, been a good it's been 10 years plus in remission yes, right? actually uh in september we celebrated her 11 year cancer free God anniversary bless. that's fantastic that's wonderful yeah i'm here with tobey atkins who's uh yoga instructor, vegan culinary person with his own. And we're going to talk about his mindful kitchen in just a little bit. We're going to take just a few minutes to uh, have a little break and hear from our sponsor, the National Health Association. You're listening to the NHA Health Science Podcast. Dr. Frank Sabatino here. Are you ready for an extraordinary adventure that combines relaxation, exploration, and vibrant health? Then set your sails for the NHA plant exclusive cruises. Imagine cruising through exotic destinations, savoring delectable plant-based cuisine, and engaging in rejuvenating activities, all while surrounded by like-minded individuals passionate about health and wellness. These cruises offer more than just a vacation. They offer an opportunity to immerse yourself in the NHA's principles of healthy living and they rank incredibly high on the ratings of eco-friendly cruise lines. We all know how important our oceans are, and our cruise partner, Windstar, is fully committed to this. Join us aboard our upcoming plant-exclusive cruises and experience the synergy of health and leisure. Delight in gourmet SOS-free meals prepared by talented chefs, attend informative workshops, and enjoy the serenity of the sea, all tailored to nourish your body, mind, and spirit. For more details and to reserve your spot on our next adventure, visit healthscience.org and click the link under travel. Don't miss this chance to indulge in a wellness retreat like no other. Elevate your well being and make memories that will last a lifetime. And remember, your feedback matters. Please take a moment to leave a rating and a review wherever you're listening to the NHA Health Science Podcast. I'm Dr. Frank Sabatino, your host. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to the Health Science Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and I'm here with Tobey Atkins. You know, uh, let people know because, you know, people... Um, are aware of yoga. They may not be aware of vinyasa, which is more of a flow breathing where the asanas kind of flow into each other. It's a very interesting flowing kind of yoga. Explain that a little bit about the yoga that you practice so people understand it a little bit better. The main style of yoga that I teach and practice is vinyasa yoga. Vinyasa yoga is very flow based. So you're always moving from pose A to pose B. Um, in ideally, um, you know, it's a flowing motion. You're not going from tree pose to down dog and then going back to standing. Um, you want all the movements to flow together. So you want to keep as much of pose A in pose B as you move from pose A to pose B. So everything's flowing. The breath is very, as in any other yoga practice, uh, the breath is very uh, important, the connection to the breath, but also flowing with the breath. So there's a lot of connection between the movement and the breath. So how was you were teaching groups when you were 10 years old? So who was coming to your classes at that age? So at that time, uh, my mom opened up a yoga studio. Uh, actually, it was a kid's yoga studio, the first in Orange County. And uh, that's where we were teaching because I had I took certificate programs with her before I got my 200 hour, uh, mostly in uh, different styles of kids yoga. Um, so we were teaching kids yoga there, having kids yoga summer camps. But once I got my 200 hour vinyasa certificate, I started teaching adult uh, group classes at the studio. And a lot of people are showing up, you know, we're having full classes, um, uh, word spread. Um, also, when I got certified, um, I actually became the youngest certified yoga teacher in the world, uh, being 200 hours certified at 10. Um, that got a, a bit of attention as well. Um, and everyone wanted to see what this uh, new young yoga teacher was all this about. This newbie, what this newbie was doing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But then you got your 500 certification hours by the time you were 14 too. It's that is that, correct. 
Right. And it also said that you had taught, you know, you've been on TV shows and you actually taught for Deepak Chopra. Tell me about that. What does that mean? How did that happen? So I, uh, Deepak Chopra was having his Seduction of Spirit seminar in, um, I believe it was uh, either Carlsbad or San Diego. I forgot exactly the spot, but it was in that area. Right. And um, he invited me to teach a yoga class to all of his guests. So there's about, I would say, three to 400 people. Uh, there and in the um, in the I forgot what room it was, but like the assembly room sort of thing, uh, the ballroom. Yes, in okay. the ballroom, I taught uh, a one-hour vinyasa yoga class to all of his guests. It's fantastic. So we talked about the evolution of you know your path to yoga, that that part of your dharma. But let's talk about how the evolution came about with your commitment to vegan nutrition, because that was something that was added on in your journey, but then you took it in a big way and we'll segue into uh, to Bay's Mindful Kitchen, which is that fantastic truck. I love your truck. Uh, it thank looks, you. It looks amazing. I, and I guess you do that all up. Where are you, in Southern California primarily? Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Southern California. Um, this is, you know, this is where I grew up. This is where I am based. So let's um, talk about the turn on of vegan nutrition for you and how that led you to wanting to really share the culinary part of that with the world and really help people eat better and learn more about, you know, eating healthy foods, protecting animals, compassion. Let's talk about all of that. Sure thing. When I was first, when I first started on this uh, path, my main focus was yoga. When I was seven years old, I saw how I helped my mom. And eventually after, you know, getting my 200 hour certificate and being in the yoga world for quite some time, uh, I started to hear um, here and there the word vegan. I heard uh, plant-based, and those right. were new concepts that I was uh, interested in finding it more about because, um, like I said before, if you're in the yoga space, you're going to hear about veganism. You're going to hear that word. So quite a few, quite a few people were telling me, you know, I should go vegan, I should be vegan, but not many people exactly t said why, uh, but I heard, I heard about veganism then and started to learn more and more uh, over the next few months and maybe a year. Um, and eventually I said, you know what? I've been hearing quite a bit about this new vegan thing. Um, I, I think we should uh, try it out. I don't know much about it, but it sounds like the right thing to do. Um, it was a decision. It was not the most educated decision, but you know, it felt right. So I said, we're gonna go vegan. Um, but I didn't mean we're going to go vegan the second. Right. We're going to be vegan sometime in the near future. I don't know when, but I know that that's, that's in our future, being vegan. Um, so, you know, a few months went by and we we're still eating the foods we we're eating, but knowing that soon we'll be on the vegan side. Um, then we were in New York uh, for a, a TV appearance and on the flight back, I had this uh, cheese platter and chicken pasta. After eating that, I felt like there was a rock sitting in my stomach. Mm -hmm. And that was, for me, that was the final straw. I said, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm vegan. I'm vegan starting now. Um, and I was, I, this was actually, um, this wasn't the first time I've been having some stomach issues after eating uh, for quite some time around then. Um, so then I said, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to be vegan now. The next morning when we landed, we watched the documentary, What the Health? And that, that is what, you know, gave us the information that we needed to know right. that gave us, you know, um, the education to back up our decision. Um, and since then we've just been, you know, learning and growing every day. Um, I, um, at first it started for health. Actually, if, at first it started just because it, it just, um, it seemed like a good decision. Um, I knew there was, there were some benefits to it. I knew there was health benefits. So that, that was uh, one of the reasons why. Um, and eventually I learned more and more um, after doing more research about the health benefits and then learning shortly after about how, uh, how great it is for the animals, you know, being on the plant-based diet and how, um, how harmful it is and how uh, cruel it is in the uh, animal agriculture industry which later evolved into, wow, I didn't know how big of an, how big of a positive impact this diet has on the environment, on the planet. Right. So I'm continuously learning 
knew more and more. Um, and when I first went vegan, I was having a lot of the, you know, restaurant vegan food or store-bought packages, vegan food, um, which is really a great way to start off on your plant-based journey. But I think it shouldn't end there, um, especially because you can find a lot of processed foods out there that are plant-based. I think it's a, a great alternative to not being vegan, as long as that's a, you know, a stepping stone to go towards even more of a health conscious yeah. diet, which I eventually learned. Did you, did you do, and, uh, and uh, people should know that when we talk about the fact that you were, you know, you achieved accreditation in yoga so early, I mean, you, you were a quick learner, obviously. I read that you finished high school at 14. Is that what it said? That's true. Yes. Well, you did that all at home. You were homeschooled. Is that how you did it? Not, not the whole time. I, I was in public school up until sixth grade. Okay. Uh, which is when I switched to private online homeschool. And at that point, you know, I just started teaching yoga. I was getting very busy. There's a lot of media attention. You know, right. people want me to fly here for this show, fly there for that appearance, fly here for this event. And uh, it wasn't, you know, sustainable to be on independent study so long. So right. I decided to switch to this program of homeschool because the way it was formatted, it was I didn't have to do this assignment, this assignment, this assignment this day. And this was tomorrow's assignment that I had to do. Right. I had all my assignments laid out and I could go at my own pace. So if Which I knew I was going to be somewhere else teaching a yoga class, I would get ahead so I wouldn't be behind when I'm done. Yeah, I, I had two of my sons are really incredible musicians. And because they were taking music out of the public school system, I homeschooled them so that they could, you know, learn what they could do independently and have the time for all of their music writing, composition, performing. And I know you're a musician. I'm a musician too. I know you play uh, a couple of very uh, interesting instruments. Before we talk about that though, did you do any study, any culinary study, any courses to prepare you for what came next with your you know, food truck? Yes, that's a good point. Um, I did, but at the beginning of my journey, I didn't have any, um, any formal culinary education. But even before I was vegan, like since I was very little, I was always in the kitchen cooking with my mom. My mom actually went to Le Cordon Bleu about 23 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, she's, she's, she loves cooking. She's been cooking since she was a little girl and um, always following her mom and her grandma around in the kitchen, learning recipes. Um, is, she cooking, so is, she cooking, is she cooking on the truck? Yes, she does. She's, <laughs> she's, That's great. That's fantastic. She's, a, she's an incredible chef today as she ever was. And everything I've learned is because of her. Um, she always taught me how to cook even when I was very young. So by the time we went vegan, um, I went vegan when I was 12 years old. It was in, the, I believe, uh, late summer of 2017 when I went vegan. And um, since we already had a bit of that culinary background, my mom, you know, being a chef for all this time and me learning uh, under her wings for all this time, we knew how to cook. So it was easy for us to go vegan. Right. But, so then I decided to start teaching cooking classes to show people how to make their own vegan food. So it's easier for them to make the switch. You did that online or you did that in person? Both. I did it. Uh, I did a lot of in-person cooking classes, okay. but I also started uh, uh, uploading, posting and publishing uh, cooking content, cooking videos online and on uh, social media. Was your show then called uh, Today's Mindful Kitchen or was it not? That's the truck only. No, that, that just came about with the food truck. Let's talk about the food truck. I look, when I saw your truck, I expected to, that's not just a food truck. That's like a serious food truck. I mean, that's oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> definitely not your average truck. If you've seen no, it. No, man, it's like, it looks like a restaurant on wheels. I mean, it, it really looks amazing. It really does. I don't know. If let's, talk, let's talk about that because it's amazing. Yeah, the food truck is definitely, um, it's been an amazing new chapter in uh, this journey that we're on. I opened the food truck when I was 16 years old um, with the help of my mom. We started this um, just a couple years ago, and it's been really amazing. It really is a great way for me to, um, for a different way for me to achieve my goal of inspiring people to live a more uh, compassionate life. Before, I was doing it uh, with my cooking classes, teaching people right. how to make their own foods. Um, because really, I let I let my food do all the lectures. I do. I let my food do all the convincing. That's the best way. Let the food do the talking. We love exactly. that. Exactly. Because people want to people, people want to taste stuff. And you know how it is. They want to taste stuff anyway. So exactly. Yeah. And 
people, they, you know, for some reason, there's this, this thought that's been floating around that if I'm vegan, I no longer get to eat my favorite foods. I don't get to have any tasty things anymore. So I let my food do, I let my food clear that up. And then they're open to hear more about why I choose to follow this uh, lifestyle. Well, wait, how, so tell me how that segues. So you, you're feeding people on the truck. How does the next step happen where you take it to the next level with information and sharing of that? You do that right off the truck or do you have another setup where you do that? So I do, I do, I, I, I've been sharing lots of um, information on my social media about uh, veganism and okay. plant-based diet, nutrition wise, because uh, when I was, I think, 14 years old, um, so maybe 14 or 15, I got certified in plant-based nutrition as well. So that gave me a bit of more nutritional background and knowledge right. on more, more information on why this diet is a really good diet to follow. So, yeah, so, so tell me how that must cut into your ability to teach yoga though too, right? I mean, it seems like it's a busy business. So tell me how you juggle both of those things. I think, um, you know, it goes hand in hand. Yoga is all about, um, keeping yourself healthy. Um, it's about not harming your body, keeping your body healthy, not harming the animals or the planet. And through cooking and veganism and nutrition, it really enhances that. Oh yeah. That yeah. I'm not, philosophically, I see the connection. I'm asking you about how much, how do you juggle the time? To oh do yeah. Work? So for, you know, yoga, a big thing that allows me to do both actually came out of the pandemic was uh, moving online. Online classes have um, were, of course, right, the right, class okay. at, at the beginning of the pandemic and have still stayed strong now. Um, being able to have um, an online uh, platform to teach, as well as now moving back in person, um, having that option is really great for me, um, especially if I'm traveling. Um, it's great for me, not just for me, but also my students. I'm able to teach students in places that I might not have been able to reach before. Um, so teaching the teaching yoga has stayed strong uh, online and in person. And the food truck has moved to a more event-based, event and catering-based um, structure. So we're not open all the time at a certain schedule. So you go um, to like veg fest, things like that, and open yeah, up the do. truck. Yeah, okay. Right, exactly. We do more like um, festivals, events, right. and then private catering for like office parties, birthdays, um, different things like that. So um, as we move on, let people know uh, where they can find you. What's the address you want them to go to to learn more about you? Yeah, you can learn uh, more about me on my website, which is tobeyatkins.com. You can find uh, all sorts of uh, all of my different offerings, which... Um, I will, you know, kind of give you a little sneak peek are going to be expanding quite a bit in the near future. And you can also find uh, links to my food truck through tobeyakins.com. So, uh, so, so talk a little bit about that. You said things coming up, what's coming up. Uh, I, I am currently in the process of, uh, learning new things to okay. incorporate into, um, what I teach and what I practice. So okay. that that one uh, is in the works right now, but I will be I will be sharing more on that as soon as it uh, okay. becomes. Okay. Oh, so you're you're work. in a le you're in a learning program now for some I, of that. I am in a, a learning process at the moment. Okay. Um, so that one I'll be sharing a bit more uh, on my social media. Okay. Uh, which is also you know you can also find me there. It's uh, at Tibay Atkins, and then you can also find my uh, my food truck through there. Um, where I post about the events that we'll be going to. Uh, you can find out where we'll be, what next public events we'll be going to. You know, Tabe, let's, let's get into something uh, maybe a little bit deeper. You know, when I was a, a child and growing up, you know, we lived with the threat of nuclear attack. I mean, it, it's going to be funny to you, but those were the days that, you know, we were in the middle of the Cold War and we used to hide under the desks in grammar school if, as if that was going to protect us in a nuclear attack, which is pretty funny. But, you know, your generation of people and even my sons grow up with the threat of what's going on in our environment and some of these things. And I really believe that it creates a certain level of a certain kind of anxiety as people look at, you know, what are we doing? What's happening? What 
What does it portend for the future? Can you talk about from your perspective where, where you are in your life and the people within the context that you meet around your friends and your ages and how they, how they talk about that, how they speak about that, how they address that little bit of anxiety about what's going on and how they look at taking proactive steps to see what they can do to make a difference? Yeah, that's very true. There is definitely quite a bit of anxiety. Um, well, many people, but especially uh, people of my age group, younger people, younger generation, um, because we see what's going on. We are less conditioned to how we've been living in this world for so long. Right. Uh, we're less conditioned. So we kind of, we see clearer that I don't know why we're doing this, but we're still doing this. We're still, you know, killing the planet. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty around that especially for the younger generations, because we know we'll be here for a while. And so far, things aren't looking too good for the future if we continue on this path. Well, that's it. But the real key is like some of what you're doing, the idea of having what we'll call really humane education, compassionate consciousness being really delivered to children at very young ages. So they come up with that mentality that people like me gathered over time, people like you were exposed to a little bit earlier, but the solution is in this kind of eating that we do and with the mindset of veganism yoga, where we're really coming from a place of empathy, compassion, and love, but really okay. incorporating that in the whole educational process. So it's not like here's kids in school and here's compassion and here's veganism, but really integrating that into a whole mindset that now people will grow up with. I, I really believe that that is where the solution has to lie because even all the people like me that do this, we're doing it also for the future of children and younger people. That's well, a lot. Of, that's a lot of what motivates me and others like me. And people like you will be able to reach more directly into that younger population where that mindset has to really evolve. So exactly. I'm so I'm so excited that you know you're involved in that. Are you seeing yourself being able to tap into that younger population of people that need to hear this message earlier in their lives? Yes, for sure. Um, you know, people like me who are you know have learned these things and are now taking active steps to raise awareness and to create uh, needed change. I think that kind of the pressure of what we have been doing to the environment for so long has inspired a lot of people to, um, you know, start uh, taking their own action and inspiring people to do the same. Like uh, me reaching the younger generation. It's the younger generation. So I don't, not everyone, but some people think, you know, it must be hard to have children, you know, want to do what you're doing, want to be vegan, want to do yoga. Not really, you know, once they, when I when I'm talking to them, they seem interested and they want to learn more, and they seem very inspired to follow these uh, these steps and to live a more mindful lifestyle. The hardest part is their parents. Right, it really is because you know the parents have been conditioned for much longer to believe this is the way I need to raise my child. They need to have meat. They need to have chicken. They need to have milk, or they're not going to be strong. They're going to get sick. Um, and really, it's not like they're trying to create, you know, they're trying to hold their kids back. They want the best for them. So they, in this way that we have been conditioned for so long. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, ham we're hampered by what we were brought up to learn and to know. So our exactly. perception is our perception is just a byproduct of that. And you're so right. Uh, fortunately, you've got a lot of people trying, you know, reaching some of the adults and we're seeing some of that shift. But the truth is, when you really think about it, it's the most natural thing for all of us is what? Love, compassion, empathy. Exactly. Those are the highest ideals of human behavior and mindset. And you almost, have to, you almost have to be conditioned into brutality and violence and all of that because it is not natural exactly. to us as human, as human beings and, and, and creatures that we are. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, as that wins out and we do make these transitions, but things have to be acted upon you know, relatively quickly because the pressures that we're exerting on the environment and, and other things need to be changed with more imminence, more expedience, you know, quicker. And so I'm, I'm just so happy that you're out there doing what you do. I was looking on your site at the, um, you know, where you donate to, the organizations that you do. 
And I noticed that a number of them relate to child cancer sites and things of that nature. Talk a little bit about how you give back yourself and how you're promoting that and what those organizations are about that you're strongly connected to in terms of donating and giving back. I think it's good for our audience to hear that. Yeah, so, you know, if we go back to the beginning, I started on this path because I saw how yoga helped heal my mom from the effects of chemotherapy and cancer. So when I started teaching my own classes when I was 10 years old, um, I started, I actually, that's when I started to find, first, you know, make money from the classes. Right. But all the money that I made from teaching yoga, I donated 100% of it to people who had cancer. Um, I've been, I was been donating to uh, a lot of uh, children and teens who are going through cancer um, and many other uh, organizations that donate directly to the patients going through uh, cancer. So you, you found that those organizations are real and they really get your donation to where it needs to go. That's exactly. Like, okay. um, for example, savingsophie.org. Right. That's one of the, one of the ones I've been donating since the beginning. Uh, Sophie is, um, um, a girl who was, who, uh, diagnosed with uh, cancer. She had a brain tumor since she was eight months old and um, is still going through um, uh, cancer and treatment today. Um, I've actually uh, met Sophie and her family and I'm very connected with them uh, up until this day. So, you know, being able to donate to the org organizations that I know and believe in and know that they're actually helping the, the people who are going through cancer right now. Is that also true of that Jesse Reese Foundation? Is that similar to that one? Yes, the Jace Jesse Reese Foundation as well. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, one of the things they do is, uh, they make joy jars is what they're called, uh, jars stuffed with toys and games and fun activities that they donate to, uh, the kids going through cancer. And I've actually, I actually got to stuff a joy jar to send to, uh, children with cancer once, which was really special. Um, so, you know, being connected with these organizations that are working very hard to help, um, directly the cancer patients is what I've been very, um, I've been advocating for, for quite a while and donating to since, um, I started teaching yoga. That's beautiful. And, um, and mercy for animals is that kind of situation too, where they're really trying to have that consciousness of providing meat alternatives, looking at the devastation that happens to animals and the suffering and reducing that. And that's another one of the organizations I saw that you were very high on. Yes, uh, Mercy for Animals, uh, PETA, and also um, uh, Kindred Spirit Animal Sanctuary, which is uh, based in Australia, uh, run by my friends Angel and Gopala Yaffa, who also are uh, kids yoga teachers, and I've taken ah, okay. uh, a couple of their training programs. So you were going to share a little bit more about what's coming up. Do you want to mention any of that? Yeah, so coming up, you know, um, of course, um, I'm going to be continuing with the food truck taking, I, I have the food truck that we're doing lots of events and catering. Um, we are based and service all of Orange County, San Diego, Los Angeles, um, and that whole, you know, general that's area. A big, that's a big area. That's right, a big yeah. Country. Also including, uh, San Bernardino and Riverside. Wow. So we, we really have quite a big, uh, an area that we can accommodate and serve, um, that we do through public events, as well as private parties, events, and catering, um, as well as uh, yoga. I'm going to be, um, I'll be posting more about uh, my upcoming public yoga offerings that will be um, coming soon, as well as, uh, as, well as online um, yoga opportunities with uh, uh, yoga opportunities, me being able to uh, teach you in group classes, if that is uh, more beneficial for you location wise, wherever you are in the world. Beautiful. But all of that can, all of that will be found on uh, my Instagram as well as my website. And I want people to know that that will also be in the show notes where they can find you and, and, you know, we'll, we'll make sure everybody sees that. So as we wind this down, do you have any final words or any information, anything else you'd like to share with the audience out here? You know, I just want everyone to be inspired not, um, I want everyone to be inspired by what you see in the world, whatever you're passionate about, if it's animals, if it's health, if it's environment, 
whatever you see that you want to make a positive change in, you're the change that we need to see in the world. So I would say, especially for us vegans, we get a lot of uh, pressure back and a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, pushback from people who have been conditioned for quite a while. Why don't you uh, tell them what your mantra is too? I think it's a good way to end this too. Right, yeah, my mantra that I believe in and live by is think good thoughts, speak kind words, feel love, be love, and give love. Can't be any better than can't do any better. and everything that you do in the world. That's what it's all about. I, I really want to thank my special guest, Tobey Atkins, today to be with us, sharing his heart, his experience, um, his his information on yoga, veganism, and his vision for a little bit of the future in terms of what he wants to accomplish in helping make some major positive change. I urge you to follow Tobey on the uh, on the sites that you'll see in our show notes. He's mentioned them a few times, and you'll see them in the show notes. Uh, I want to really thank you for being here today. It's been really a pleasure for me to, to talk with you. Thank you, Frank. And, it was nice talking with you as well. Thank you. And I really want to thank uh, all the people that joined us today, all the people out there, because without you, we can't do what we do. I want to really thank you for being part of this really active, healthy community. On behalf of the National Health Association, I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and I look forward to being with you on the next episode of the Health Science Podcast. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association. Thank you for joining us today and for your commitment to evidence-based health science that backs a whole food plant-exclusive lifestyle and contributes to the well-being of all people, animals, and our environment. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino. Be sure to leave a rating and a review, and we'll see you on the next show.